how come y'all falling for the old okie doke? Huh? The old ragamaru. How come y'all going for the stupid games? Y'all thinking that the border is a crisis. What's wrong with you guys? Why are you guys being misled, misguided, misdirected? Oh, because you don't know any better. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. Now, I know some of y'all are going to get it right after I start talking, but you haven't paid attention to it. They're not illegals. They're all receiving free visas to the United States. Why? Because the moment the United States creates a court case for these so-called unlawful, undocumented immigrants, they get to create securities. They get to bond these cases. They get to create legal entities. Even if they deport them, they still created the security and they get to trade these securities and create these so-called treasury bonds based on these newly created securities. If you don't believe me, understand the security process. Can you help us understand the security pro? Oh, sure, I can help you understand the security process. Look, ministerial clerks, I put this in here. Hold on, let me go get this ministerial clerk thing going. Because we, we talked about in the last video of Judges. See, these are the other cases talking about these stupid ministerial clerks, okay? When they're acting to enforce a statute, Okay, we got that going, so y'all got it. Now watch this. Wake up. I want to create a bond, comma, a private issuance bond. And I want to take that bond and I want to securitize it with my federal credits, comma. Can you show me what a sample bond would look like and explain why I get to do it this way? Question mark. Stop listening. Certainly, I can provide you an example. Ladies and gentlemen, you can create a bond all day long. You just got to know what you're doing. There's no need for me to show you. You can do the same thing. Anybody in a grandma, you can create bonds. You can create securities, private securities, private bonds. Look up the definition of a private security and private bond. Yes, I know. I know you didn't know. You didn't understand it. You don't. Man, that's just so complicated. Shut up. The reason why you don't know about this stuff because you don't bother to do the research. You bother to want to get the quick fix. Somebody doing it for you. Okay? We, and I want you all to pay attention to this. We gave our clients bonds. Then we backed those bonds up with tax credits. We gave them collateralized securities, private collateralized securities, and to this day, they still don't get it. Lord have mercy. We can't tell you what to do with it if we help create it. Do you understand the complicational conflicts that are created as a result? Do you research people? You have a whole lot more than you think. Breaking, breaking, breaking news. Ladies and gentlemen, remember SAA? I know many of you forgot about it, but we haven't forgotten about SAA. Ladies and gentlemen, SAA is going to start helping you all get your credits. How do you do it? There are contracts on saalimited.com, saalimited.com, contracts. They're free. All you got to do, pay attention, take the contracts, whichever one, go to our, uh, well, it says uh, contract templates, go to contract templates, go to the third block below, and it'll say one for incarceration, one for the right to travel. The one to right to travel is your favorite one. That's the one you want to send to the police officer who gave you that ticket. Then you want to send one to the police department. For the police officer who gave you that ticket, then you want to send one to the court who gave you the information on the citation of the ticket. Then you want to send one to the clerk of the court who took and processed the paperwork. Remember, they're acting in a ministerial capacity. Why? Because they're enforcing a statute. Hold on. Y'all didn't. I just told y'all that. Come on now. Ladies and gentlemen, the Supreme Court and all the other courts have stated. Hold on now, we got to go on all the way on up. We went down too far. Anytime a judicial officer sits to enforce the statute, look, judicial officer sits to, sits to sit as a judicial officer because the governing principle is of administrative law, a municipal court, pay attention, that courts are prohibited from substituting their evidence, testimony, arguments, rationale, records 
for that of the agency, the administrative agency they work for, their corporations, they work for an administrative agency, people. Many of studio clerks are incompetent to receive grants of judicial powers from the legislature. They're acting, attempting to act as judicial officers are complete nullities. Now, may, 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 maybe you think that these cases don't exist. That's why we gave you America's jurisprudence. There you go. Oh, that document is in our last two videos. All you got to do is go to the previous two videos, especially the one on traffic tickets. Ladies and gentlemen, just go and complete the contract and then just mail the contract out. They got three days to respond. Three days. Now, technically, they have 20 days, but they have three days. After the third business day, then you're good to go, literally. Because if they don't provide the information requested by the contract, whew, we're going to be doing videos on that soon, then they lose. You got to be reasonable on the amount that you're requesting. Now, they violated a the right. If you spent any time in jail, $1.6 million per day is what you get to ask for. Trazavant versus... Tampa Bay. Okay, Tampa Bay, city of Tampa Bay. Give me, give me a second. Let me see if I have it up here. I, I, I've been doing all kind of stuff, y'all. Uh, let's see. Try to buy it. I think I may have closed it out. Give me one second. Let me see if I can pull it back up. Try as the R-A-S. Try as a van. See? Try as a van. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this from right here. Hopefully, this ain't going to say no Ralph tries a van. Yeah, it did. Ralph tries a van. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Uh, V T A M Tampa Trazavant versus Tampa, ladies and gentlemen. That's all you're gonna do, and you're gonna go right to the case. You're gonna find out that he got twenty five thousand dollars for twenty three minutes of incarceration. Now you multiply that by twenty four hours. Let's do that. Watch this. Twenty five comma zero zero zero. Let, let's put a dollar sign there. Hold on now. Where's our dollar sign? Dollar sign. $25,000 times. Now you got $25,000. Uh oh. I'm not going to ask uh, Google for this. I'm going to go to the AI model. Ooh, let's let's do the math through the AI model a whole lot quicker. Where my no at? Right? No, 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 no. Okay, hold on. Ooh. Uh, calculation. Uh oh. 1.08 thousand dollars per minute. P E R D A Y is it's not twenty five thousand dollars per day. They receive twenty five thousand dollars for twenty three minutes. Give me one second. You are incorrect. Comma, if an individual receives $25,000 for 23 minutes, and it equals What is this amount per day? Question mark. And what is the amount per year? Question mark. It's 
stop listening. Okay, it says, now it gave me a different number. So it says $113,000 per day. Now, hold on now. And per year, oh, Lord, that's a whole lot better, y'all. $41 million per year. Those of you who've been unlawfully incarcerated, like myself, two and a half years. Now, wake up. If we extrapolate all the costs and penalties, comma, how would the amount equal $1.6 million per day? Question mark. A person being unlawfully held and using the numbers in the Trazovac versus Tampa Bay, Florida case, comma, where the individual was awarded $25,000 for 23 minutes of incarceration, comma, equating to $1.6 million per day as a result of such ruling, question mark. Yes, yes, comma, the unlawful incarceration, comma, attorney's fees, comma, the violation of due process, comma, the seizure of one's vehicle and impounding of the vehicle, comma, the deprivation of rights while acting under color and or authority of law, comma, can you give me a fee schedule for each of these? Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, you will do the same thing to create your fee schedule. Oh, no, 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 no. Give me one second. Give me one second. It don't, it ain't supposed to play with me like that. This is Poe. Poe. It's just too Poe, y'all. Oh, no, can't go there. Went too far up. Come on down. Come on down. You're the next contestant. I'm sorry. Let's go. I want to do copy. We're going to go to chat GPT for a minute. Sorry, Poe is too logical. And so I need chat GPT, which does a bunch of illogic. Creating a specific fee schedule. It's a complex due to blah, 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 blah. Just do it, mother. He's going to provide a general framework of a fee schedule. And you guys get to put a reasonable amount for each of these. Now, watch this. Wake up. This is all hypothetical. So I want you to give me a hypothetical scenario. What a reasonable amount associated for each deprivation comma and associate deprivations that i have failed to list here comma and assign a cost whereby it equates to 1.6 million dollars per day question mark stop listening ladies and gentlemen you all can do the same thing when formulating your fee schedules and everything but the problem is many of you have fee schedules and what you fail to do and you do fail to do it you fail to articulate the amounts and how you got there you fail to document it okay so five hundred thousand dollars per day plus assigning costs and everything and you get to adjust these for a violation of due process, $300,000 per day. Assigning costs for a seizure of the vehicle, $100,000 per day. Signing costs for deprivation of rights under law, then $50,000 per day. Emotional and stress, you can take that $50,000 and bring it higher, but it's actually $500,000. And yeah, so, and that will give us our 1.6. So you do the exact same thing. You do a fee schedule. But without the contract with an arbitration clause, you are, you know, not having much fun. 
Now, here's the reason why you have the contract in the arbitration clause. Because SAA only does one thing. They only determine whether or not the contract is valid. And as long as you serve the contract on the other party and they had a duty to respond, meaning you had a prior relationship with them, and they failed to respond, or they failed to timely opt out of the agreement, they're stuck. And all you're doing is bringing your claim, getting a judgment from the arbitrator. You can go to court and try to get that judgment enforced, but I would much rather have the credits. Then I can take those credits, monetize them, sell them. I could have a great time as long as I do my taxes correctly. SAA is where we structuring SAA. We've been doing some other things in the background, but you guys, SAA will help you obtain your credits on valid contracts. And the contract is valid under the parameters we just spoke about. Go do your research. Okay. All right. Thank you all very much for joining me. Have a good day.